Welcome back to the Engineered Angler. Uh, I'm here messing around, bending some wire for some lures. And since I had a bunch of people ask if I uh, would go ahead and make a video of the build of this little bending tool, I figured it's a good day to do it. It's chilly outside. I'm not going to go into how I make the actual jig plate because I made a video of that uh, just a while back and I'll put a little card up here. So let me show you a close up of what this looks like. I made this from an adjustment knob on a really big uh, regulator. It's stainless steel so it wasn't too hard to work uh, and it's pretty simple. There's just simply a pin embedded in it and a little shoulder that I filed into it. If you've been watching most of my videos you'll know that uh, everything starts on the dry erase board. I'm making another one because I'm using some heavier wire these days. And this one is really made for the lighter uh, wire that I've been using before. So I'm gonna make a kind of a heftier one with a little broader handle so I got a little more leverage. So let me do a quick oblique drawing of what this is supposed to look like. Okay, that's not great, but if you're looking straight down at it, you have the bending shoulder and then you basically have a pin in the middle of it. Now the distance between this edge and the edge of your pin has to be big enough for the diameter of your wire and just a little bit of tolerance. So selecting the size of the bolt isn't super critical, uh, but you definitely want to go with one that is as small as you can stand to make it. Uh, because the bigger it is, the more room it takes up in your bending jig and it could get in the way of other bends close by. So it kind of limits how close your bends could be. And then the other part of this thing is the handle itself, which you guys can get creative and make your own. You can either find a handle that's already existing. You can grab the handle off a spigot, you can do your own. I'm gonna make one out of wood. Haven't quite decided how big I'm gonna make it, but I'm gonna take a rectangular piece of wood that I have out there. Uh, I'm gonna draw a circle, and then I'm gonna divide it, that circle, and I'm gonna drill a hole at the intersection at each of each one of those. Then I'm gonna take this thing to the bandsaw and cut all this out and that should give me a nice shape with some nice uh, grippy little knots in it. And then I'll drill a hole right in the center and we'll attach our bolt. Okay, so let's go ahead and work out the diameter of this bolt. So I've gone ahead and inserted here the dimensions that we're going to need, right? Uh, this little bending shoulder uh, is going to have to be at least a sixteenth uh, wide, just so it's resilient enough so it won't wear away over time. Uh, the next thing you need to take into account is your wire, right? That's critical because you need to have space to get that wire in there, but uh, not too much. You can be a little slobby, but not too much, but you can't be tight because you won't get it in there or it'll be so, so tight that when you go to pull it off, it'll pull your wire right off your jig. So uh, I'm using 0 0.051 wire, so I'm going to go ahead and call that 0 0.06. 
The next thing is the diameter of the pin, the center pin that actually extends out and uh, fixes your, your tool in place. Uh, I'm using a 964th pin and that's a set because that's the diameter of the nail I'm cutting to use for these pins. And 964th is 0 0.1406, that's hard to say. And then the amount of material you want left on the edge uh, is, I'm going to call it a 16th. You can make it thinner. <clears throat> so that's uh, 0.625. So we're going to add all this together. So that equals 0 0.325. So I'm going to go ahead and round that up to 0.375. That's 3 eighths. That's an easy bolt to find. So let's go out to the shop and rummage through my bolt uh, bins and see if I can find something. Okay, first I need to be sure that I've got enough thread on the end to be able to go through the piece of wood and still handle a couple of nuts, one on the bottom and one on the top. So this bolt is 3 eighths and the shank is low enough. I'm going to mark it there and get ready to cut it. That should be about an inch and a half to two inches worth of open bolt shank. Okay, so first I'll cut it to length and then I'll shape the end. I'll smooth it off a little bit with a file just to have a smooth surface to work with. Now I want to go ahead and make a mark for that shoulder and I'll score in a line just so I can measure where I need to put the pin and then put the pin where it belongs and I'll go ahead and punch a spot for the drill. Here I'm only going to drill down about 3 eighths of an inch. That's really all you need. Now I'm going to go ahead and cut the shoulder down to depth which is about a sixteenth of an inch as well. Now I'm going to cut that face off down to the depth of that shoulder so that I can create that offset. Now a little more cleanup with the file. Alright, that looks pretty good, but I'll clean up these sharp edges with a smaller file. Alright, now we can join the handle to the tool itself. And I want to be able to put a drift pin in it, just to lock it in place so I know the handle will never spin on the shaft. So I'm going to set this thing in the vise and drill a hole in it for a drift pin. Before I do the final assembly, I want to paint it with some Plasti Dip, some black paint, and I'll use this wire to hang it to dry. I'm going to cut this pin. This is the centering pin that I'm going to put in the uh, shaft of my bending tool. And I cut it long enough so it sticks out about a quarter inch beyond that bending shoulder. Uh, I do that because my jig plates are a quarter inch thick aluminum. I think this is ready to be glued in. A couple of drops of AC glue in the hole and then I spritz the end of the pin with some activator. Uh, drop the pin in the hole and within a couple of seconds it's all done. Okay let's go ahead and assemble. I've got this nut in there and I can then slide this in here this is going to be my pin. I'm going to cut the head off and then I'll drive it in with this. I'll give it a couple of pops. It'll, uh, it'll drive itself into the wood on the other side of the bolt. And that's nice and firm. I'll now put a, a nut here just to cinch it down. So here's the finished product. Uh, you can see I painted it in a flat black, but that's a, actually a Plasti Dip. So it's kind of rubbery and, and gives you a nice grip. So let's go ahead and do a test run. What I've done is I've, what I've done is put a twist eye on this wire 
and I'm going to use this little makeshift jig to go ahead and test our new device. First thing you gotta do is get the nose pin in. You set your wire down nice and flat, or as flat as you can get it on your jig, and then you just drop your tool into the next hole and rotate it around. You want to be sure when you're bending that you're holding the wire flat. So if you haven't seen me do this uh, on one of the other uh, videos, you should go ahead and take a peek at how I do it uh, so you can get a better idea. I'm only going to do a few bends here, but you hold it tight and go ahead and roll it around. Actually, this, this thing works really well. I'm really happy with this. And there you go. And grab another pin. Drop it into place. Ready for the next bend. Hold it nice and flat here. Rotate it around. Get it on the last bend. You just want to get it so it aligns with the hole. And now, and even if it flops out of shape, don't worry. It'll come back into shape once you've uh, gotten it all bent. So now I'm going to take, and so this last bend is simply to set the location for the for the twist eye so I'm just gonna kink it around and not do a complete turn and that should do me I'm gonna go ahead and make that eye and then I'll show you what it looks like so I went ahead and made this twist eye and let's take a look how it fits uh, if you do drop it right back on the original jig and you can see it works out perfect right well thanks for watching this video was shot with a brand new camera so I'm, I'm still trying to learn it I hope you're able to utilize this uh, information and the techniques that I use to make this gizmo. As always, thanks for watching. If you like these kind of videos, subscribe and offer some more suggestions. This was a request from several subscribers, so uh, maybe you have something that you want to see. Let me know, and I'll catch you on the next video.